The reign of terror began in the summer of 1968, when a young couple, Barbara Locci and Antonio Lobianco, were found brutally murdered in their car near Florence. The crime scene was a grisly sight, with multiple stab wounds and a chilling mutilation of the female victim. This shocking incident marked the beginning of a series of eerily similar murders that would haunt the region for years to come. As the body count continued to rise, investigators struggled to make sense of the gruesome patterns emerging from each crime scene. It became apparent that the perpetrator had a fixation on young couples, targeting them while they were in intimate situations, often parked in lovers' lanes or secluded areas. This realization added a terrifying element to the killings, as it meant that nobody was safe, even in moments of vulnerability and seclusion. Dubbed the Monster of Florence by the media, the serial killer left behind a chilling signature at each crime scene. The murderer would mutilate the female victims' bodies, often removing their sexual organs as a gruesome trophy. This sadistic ritual only added to the horror and fueled the public's fascination with the case. The monster's ability to perpetrate such heinous acts without being caught perplexed both the investigators and the public alike. The investigation into the monster of Florence killings was marred by multiple missteps and false leads. Early on, suspicion fell on various individuals, including a local farmer and a notorious criminal dubbed the Sardinian. However, these suspects were ultimately cleared of any involvement, leaving investigators back at square one. The lack of progress in capturing the elusive killer fueled frustration and fear within the community, leading to a sense of hopelessness. Perhaps one of the most infamous twists in the Monster of Florence case came in the form of a journalist, Mario Spezzi, and an eccentric painter, Pietro Pacciani. Spezzi had been covering the murders extensively and began to receive anonymous letters from someone claiming to be the killer. The enigmatic messages contained intimate details about the crimes, leading Spezzi to believe that he had encountered the true monster. Alongside Pacciani, the duo delved deep into their own investigation, implicating Pacciani as the prime suspect. Despite building a case against Pacciani, the evidence ultimately fell apart. His trial resulted in a shocking acquittal due to mishandled forensic procedures and allegations of police corruption. This turn of events left many disillusioned and further eroded public trust in the criminal justice system. While Pacciani's involvement in the killings remains unclear, the monster of Florence continued to elude capture, leaving a trail of unanswered questions and shattered lives in its wake. Over the years, countless theories and suspects have emerged, keeping the monster of Florence case alive in the public consciousness. Some believe that the murders were the work of a secret society or a satanic cult, exploiting the fear and paranoia that gripped Italy during those tumultuous decades. Others theorize that multiple killers may have been involved, explaining the variations in the murders and the elusiveness of a single suspect. However, despite numerous leads, the truth behind the monster of Florence remains elusive, shrouded in darkness. The monster of Florence killings continue to captivate the world's interest, standing as a testament to the chilling enigma of unsolved crimes. The case represents a harrowing reminder of how one individual's reign of terror can grip an entire nation and leave a lasting impact on a community. As we explore the details, clues, and theories surrounding this haunting series of murders, may we also remember the victims whose lives were tragically cut short, their families forever scarred by this dark chapter in Italian history. 